Hi there, my name is Jacob Aldry and you are watching part two of Moto Gadget's multi-part series on how to install the Mo Unit Blue and many of its accessories. In the first part, we got you up to speed on this motorcycle, on Moto Gadget, and the shopping list of what you may want to be buying from Moto Gadget to start your install. So at this point, maybe you have bought about 90% of the parts you think you need for Moto Gadget and they're in front of you like they are here. So in this video, in part two, I'm gonna walk you through each component and why I selected it for this build and maybe that'll help inspire you then. We're gonna get our hands dirty and we are going to strip down this motorcycle cycle to see all of its wiring and I'm going to give you some advice on how to do that on your bike. Then once our bike is in a spot where we can see all the wiring, we are going to start identifying every component to the electrical system and I'm going to help you identify what parts need to go so you can install the Mo unit and what parts need to stay. And when we do that, I'm not just going to give advice on the BMW Airhead, I'm going to give you advice that you can use on your motorcycle, whether it's a Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, BMW, Triumph, you name it. This advice on how to identify the electronics on your motorcycle will still apply. It can be really tough to apply the advice you get on how to install a Mo Unit Blue until you understand your motorcycle and how it works and you can start asking really specific questions. By the end of this video, we're gonna get you confident and you're gonna be at that point. Let's get into it. Now, where would this build be without the Mo Unit Blue? Everything else I show you, minus like mirrors and grips, is going to come back to this. This is the core of the upgrade for the electronics on your motorcycle. Say goodbye to these big front turn signals. Instead, we are removing them and we are not replacing them in this location. So we'll probably get a new uh, headlight bucket mount so that this whole thing can go. And instead, we're going to the ends of the handlebars with this Mo disc. And what we're gonna do is we're going to get the adapter that holds both the Mo disc and a mirror, which I'll get to in a minute. And those are gonna go on the ends of the bars here. Not only is it a simpler, sleeker look, but it is also higher up and further out, which could be good for people seeing it. Now back here, it's getting the Mo rear. We are gonna be replacing this big old tail light, these big turn signals, this license plate bracket and the light that shines down onto it with this one piece here, the Mo rear. So as I noted in the first video here, we are doing this first installation as a swap. So we're keeping a lot of the stock electronics, like the charging systems and ignition and stuff like that. And then when I come through to do this as an entire motorcycle build, we're going to show you some more swaps there and how to install it from the ground up with some other upgrades surrounding it. But when it comes to the exterior parts, I'm not first buying parts that would be made to adapt. Then the build parts, we're just going to be installing the parts that are going on the real build. Although to be honest, on something like this, I could probably remove most of these parts and then slide this in right here to the back of this fender and do something like that. So it'd still work as a conversion. On the wheels here, we'll be adding the Mo pressure to the valve stems. This will let us monitor the tire pressure, which is super, super important, and very few things other than oil temp change so much while riding. Now for the key switch, we're gonna be swapping it out for the Mo Lock NFC. What's cool here is you just take your NFC tag that comes with it, you tag it on, it turns the bike on really nice and easy. What's also cool is that this key switch was mounted just right up here with the gauges, but I can kind of put this wherever I want so long as I have physical access to it. I don't know exactly where it's going to go on this build. It kind of depends on how it comes together, but I'm thinking a little bit lower towards the seat, uh, somewhere maybe near that subframe. But in any case, I can put it really wherever I want. For the gauge, I'm gonna be running the Chrono Classic 2. I think it's gonna match this build, but just in case I don't like it, and because I wanna show you how to install both of them, I also have the Motoscope Pro. So depending on which one you're gonna install, I'm gonna run you through both of them anyways, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be running the Chrono Classic 2 on this BMW build. For switches, of course, I'm gonna be running the Moto Gadget Mo switches, and these are the ones that are backlit with LEDs which are pretty cool, but the thing is, is they come pre-wired. Now, I certainly see that as a benefit, but you may not if you wanted to know how to wire your switches up. So we've got the most switches here that aren't backed with LEDs, that aren't pre-wired, I'm gonna still show you how to wire these up and install them. And don't forget in video one, I showed you how to pick out your switches, how many buttons you need on either side, so you can always go back to that if you didn't watch it. Now, for mirrors, I'm torn between two. I have two different options, they're very similar, they're definitely different in size, but otherwise their general shape is pretty similar. I think this comes down to the build how the overall bike looks, but I know that they're gonna be going on the ends of the handlebars here, and I think they're gonna be facing up, not down. Lastly, for grips, we're gonna be running the Moto Gadget Mo Grip Softs. Now, if we want to install a Mo unit, which we do, we need to first understand our own electronics and the wiring harness. So to do that, we need to strip our bike down until we can see all the wires. The name of the game is that if there's wires going somewhere and you don't know where they end up, you need to remove parts until you can see where they end up. For this bike, all that's gonna take really is some Allen keys, some sockets, 
gadgets, flathead, Phillips head, maybe some pliers, maybe a pick, really some pretty basic garage tools. And we're just gonna get to work stripping this thing down until we feel like we can see all the wires and where they go. Now, if I was to give you one piece of advice about this process, it is to be intentional. Before you go ripping something off, look and see how it's installed. Don't just blindly grab around the corner and rip off a pin and say, you'll figure it out when you have to install it back together. Instead, look at the parts you're about to take off. See how they're assembled. Take note of what bolts and screws you remove. Maybe use some Ziploc baggies and label them. I know all of you appreciate building motorcycles, but don't forget to appreciate taking them apart. So take your time. This might even be your last few moments that you get to see your motorcycle as stock. So we've got the motorcycle stripped down where we can see all the wiring, all the electronics. We have the controls that we can get to, the battery, the starter, you name it, it's all visible to us. So from here, we need to figure out what is what. Now to make this as clear as possible, let's break down the motorcycle's electronics into three categories. The first two categories we are going to keep, and the third category is what is going to be replaced with the Moto Gadget Mo Unit Blue. The first category is charging, and that is everything that takes the engine's motion, turns it to electricity, and charges the battery. That is all still going to remain. The second category that we're going to keep on this motorcycle is everything related to the ignition. And ignition, I don't mean the key switch. I'm gonna do my best to call the key switch the key switch and not the ignition, even though that is a common colloquialism. Just so you know when I'm talking about the ignition, I'm talking about the thing that fires the spark plugs that ignites, ignition, ignites all the air and fuel in the cylinders. So anything that monitors the engine's crank position or anything that's related to timing, any other components used to give power to the coils, the coil or coils themselves, and the spark plugs and the wires going from the coils to the spark plugs. Everything that gets this engine to fire is going to stay here as well. Now, if you want to upgrade to some fancy new ignition system, a better coil, a modern regulator rectifier, all that stuff, you are more than welcome to. And I'm going to when I do the full rebuild and when we do this install again. But for this first installation, I just wanna show you what you need to replace. And it isn't anything from the charging or the ignition systems, but everything else has got to go. So that's going to be turn signal relays, headlight relays, anything that relates to these switches here, all this stuff that does the controls, the turn signals, the gauge system, all that is going to be replaced. I guess there's technically a fourth category of parts that are going to stay on this motorcycle and that is going to be sensors. So that is going to be, you know, your neutral switch sensor, your oil pressure switch, stuff like that. That is going to stay on here. But again, that can be modified, upgraded if you'd like, but it certainly doesn't have to be. So with all that being said, how do you figure out what are the charging components, the ignition components, the, the parts you take off? Well, I've got a few different ways. And I think if you combine them all, you're gonna be in a really good spot for your own motorcycle and figuring out how it all works. First, and the most important is going to be getting a wiring diagram. This is going to help you see your wires, where they go, what colors they are, how many go to each different location. It is really going to be the map to help you understand how your motorcycle works. But the wiring diagram doesn't really show you what anything actually looks like. It's just boxes and squares and circles and stuff like that. So the next way that we're going to be figuring out how everything works is with a multimeter in its continuity setting. With the multimeter in its continuity setting, we are going to figure out where wires are going from something we do understand to something that we don't. And here's how we're gonna do that. Here I have the starter button. And let's say I wanna find the starter relay. And I looked at my wiring diagram and I can see that there is a wire that goes from the starter button to the starter relay. Well, we've got three different relays here, right? So let's go to our starter switch and let's take either one of these wires and find where we have a good contact with that starter wire. There, right there will work. Okay, and now for the other side, I know that I'm, I can touch some bare metal. I know that it's not a ground, okay? And we can pull off one of these relays. And now this box obviously isn't connected to the motorcycle. So we're gonna go to the terminal and we're gonna be touching each of the metal contacts. 
Nope, no noises from any of those. Now I actually made a short form video version of this for Moto Gadget's TikTok and Instagram page. Uh, so you can see I've already written it on here. This is the starter relay. So a little bit of a spoiler, but you can see when I pop this off and set that aside, I can touch these contacts and yep, only one of them makes a noise. So we have a wire here that goes from the start switch down near where this relay connects. Now that is a really good sign, but maybe I'm on a false ground or just some other wire that connects. Maybe it runs around, who really knows? So let's go to the third way that we're gonna figure out what our electronics are. The third is to take a look at what you believe to be the right part and look at the wires coming off of it. Reference your wiring diagram and see, is it the same amount of wires and are they the same colors? If you've got the same amount of wires in the same colors that the wiring diagram says that you have, you've probably got the part. Now the last way I like to confirm to see if I've got the right part is to search it online. So for our starter relay, I'll type in 1981-1982 BMW R65 starter relay and see what shows up. Okay, now using all of those methods, we are going to slowly pull off all the wires that we don't need. Like all the electrical components that isn't the ignition and isn't the charging systems. Now, just like taking apart this motorcycle, we are going to do it very, very intentionally. Don't just go ripping parts off and throwing them away and not knowing where they go. Ideally, we kind of want to remove things without dissecting dissecting them. For example, I have my start kill switch here. I'm not gonna just snip this wire. I still wanna know what colors these wires are and where they go. So I'll be running it through the frame and kind of pulling it out and we'll kind of see how it ends up, but we will probably end up with a very loose wiring harness with only a couple wires connected by the end of this. So let's start investigating all of our components, start pulling things off while being intentional about keeping them connected and understanding where they go. And then we'll go from there. You'll notice that I'm labeling everything. We're not reusing these wires that lead to the horn. I just want to always have reference. It's, it's my rule for building motorcycles is don't destroy the old stuff until the new stuff is successfully installed. So I just want to have references for things. And, and who knows, maybe there's some component I took off that I go, oh, I still do need to use that. So for that reason, everything's getting labeled. Oh, this guy needs a label. Okay, so we have finally made it. All this stuff is just for lights and signals and sensors. Everything up here is for the gauges and controls that we're switching. We are left with maybe six to seven, six to eight wires that are connecting to the things that charge, being the charging system, and the things that light off the spark plugs, the ignition system. So now we have to be very careful, but we're almost at that stage where we can just pop this whole wiring harness off, leave these things here and label which wires are still left so we know how to plug the Mo unit into these systems. So we're gonna do the same thing we've been doing through the whole process. We're gonna go to our wiring diagram. We're gonna check out the wire colors, how many wires there are, and we're gonna start labeling everything. So I decided to uh, pull my wiring harness off completely and I've got it laid out here kind of how it was on the bike. So we've got turn signals, headlights, controls, the horn, main harness, relays, and the tail and turn signals all back here. And then that only leaves us with a couple little plugs to figure out. But uh, because I have the plugs right here and none of them are the same colors or quantity, I can easily go, okay, this plug here connects to this one here, that sort of thing. And really now the name of the game is asking yourself the question, what do I need to do to keep this stuff happy? I'll give you one example and that is the coils. I see that on the coils, there's two black and two green wires coming off of the coils here. And I can look here and I can see I have these wires. Now, when I go to my wiring diagram, 
I can see that one black wire runs straight to the ignition control unit. So the ignition control unit is still up here. I just need to make sure that I have a black wire run to the right spot in the ignition control unit. But the other black wire runs all the way up and around and into this diode. And doing some research, I found out that, uh, just to put it simply, BMW was kind of weird about how they decided to give power and tell uh, the units to be charging the battery and all that stuff. But the problem is that I can't just cut that wire or the battery will never charge. So I have to simulate that diode or keep that light bulb that's up in the gauges, which I'm not going to, I'd have to keep that. So I found someone online that sells a little wire that replicates that signal to allow it to charge. This is why I said that you've probably bought about 90% of what you needed because there's going to be about 10% of this type of stuff. So I've got the instruction manual that came with the little wire and now I know what to do with the black wires. Although to be clear, it looks like the new wire doesn't go in the black terminal anymore. It's going to go in the green terminal. So speaking of, I then can take a look at my green wires and see that one green wire again goes to the ignition control unit. So I'll need to make sure that I find a way for that wire to end up in the ignition control unit. The other green wire I follow along here and it runs up to the emergency stop switch, which I know what an emergency stop switch does is it gives power to the coils or not. So when you need to kill the bike in an emergency or just normally, you turn it off and it disconnects the power. So for that wire, we're gonna cut it and make a note that that needs to be 12 volt switched power or however it's going to be integrating into the Mo unit. Now, if that feels a bit confusing, don't forget that you have the wires right here. And so I've even removed a lot of the tape to be able to take a look and see where they literally go. So now I can follow these wires to their switches, see where they end up and see how they reconnect with the unit. So if you ever get dizzy from all the forum posts and wiring diagrams, don't forget that you have the wiring in front of you and you can always go back to the old fashioned way and check your work through the physical wires. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate the Mo unit into all the wiring that we've left up here and figured out. So there are four different things that you should look at as next steps. First off is have your electronics prepped and ready to go. So reconnect the wires that don't involve the Mo unit and have the wires that need to get connected to the Mo unit ready and labeled. Two is to mock up where you want the Mo unit. Take some cardboard and some hot glue and have that be your steel plate and welder and try out some spots to see where you may want it to fit. Or you know, maybe you're lucky and you have some existing bolt holes that will work to hold the unit. But either way, whatever you decide, use the mock-up version, either the bolt holes that you found or that piece of cardboard and hot glue and leave that on the frame while you're figuring out the initial wiring. Then once you know where all your wiring is going and that you like the location of, a, of your Mo unit, move it out of the way and then weld up your actual plate that you're going to be using. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it any way you'd like, but that's just the way that I'd suggest. Three is to purchase that last 10% that you're missing. And now you'll notice that we haven't really talked about what wiring we're going to use. And for that, we are going to be using the Moto Gadget Ultimate Builders Pack. In here, we have what I would say is about 98% of the different wires and connectors that you're going to need. We've got an inline fuse for the battery. We've got the thin and thick wires for inputs and outputs. And we have got a ton of different insulation and heat shrink and covers and all that in here. I would if you haven't placed your initial order to grab all your Moto Gadget stuff, buy that right from the get-go. And so you can start mocking it up. This is again, I say 90% because who knows, maybe you wanna mount this 20 feet away from the battery, I wouldn't suggest it, but it doesn't have 20 feet of six gauge inline fused wire for you. So it is an incredible starting point and it may be all you need, but just in case, that's why your homework assignment for number three is line this up and everything else and figure out what you need to complete the kit. And don't worry, if you're watching this in the future, we're gonna have all those videos out that show you what wires we need, where they're going and stuff. And that'll also be a huge help for figuring out what wires you may need to purchase. But either way, number four is planning out your basic wiring. So mount up your Mo unit, you know, mock it up where you want it and start kind of visualizing where wires are gonna go. This is probably gonna be a bad spot, right? Because I need to have wires that come out and I don't want them to go over. So maybe there's a different location that works for it. You don't need to know how the Mo unit works yet. That's gonna be the next video. But you do know that wires are gonna come from the turn signals out back and have to get to this Mo unit. So kind of start planning out those routes. Or you can read ahead as Moto Gadget has manuals out for the Mo unit, the gauges, the switches, and everything else. In the next video, we're gonna show you how the Moto Gadget Mo Unit Blue works regarding wiring. We're gonna show you the skills and tools needed for the install. And we're finally gonna get the Mo Unit integrated into the motorcycle with the wiring that we had to keep. Don't forget that we're on Instagram and TikTok. Otherwise, this has been Jacob Alderuth with Moto Gadget, and I will see you in the next video.